This terrible state of fear in which I found myself convinced me that I was completely incapable of surviving on my own. But author Janet Wright did survive and found that writing about fear and personal sadness is a way to overcome it and create a better tomorrow. And when she published The Widow's Journey, she found out something more, that there were many people who could identify with the journey that she thought was hers and hers alone, and that no matter the struggle, no one is ever really abandoned. Indianapolis resident Janet Wright was a newlywed when she followed her husband, Dr. James J. Wright, to Saigon, Vietnam, in 1960. Refusing to be separated from Jim, who was medical director of the United States Dispensary, Janet witnessed firsthand the horrors of war. There were tanks all over the streets, but fancying myself a bit of a photographer, I took my camera and went shooting. Jim continued on with his humanitarian work, the couple even taking care of an orphan Vietnamese girl. While in Saigon, Janet got offered a dream job with Pan Am. We traveled with Pan Am around the world. Every place Pan Am stopped, we got off and spent a few days. Jim really loved the thought of traveling, the mystery of it all. He's a very complex human being, very intelligent, was very kind, very generous, very concerned about humanity. He decided to go into community mental health work because he wanted to take care of people who really needed it and couldn't pay for it. He was also a wonderful pianist. And he used to put the children up on the piano when they were, as soon as they could sit up, they sat on the piano and he played to them. As the years passed, Jim and Janet had their lives full of family, laughter and love, when unexpectedly, tragedy struck. While planning a dream vacation to Greece, Jim died of a heart attack. I asked them to call a priest, and I stood there saying the Lord's Prayer with the priest, but you know, it's like being a little girl in a strange place and not knowing what in the world is happening to you. It's, it, it, I guess it's shock. You know, I guess that's what it is. It was very hard. The day of his funeral, which I kept private, I had the few people back to the house and we were out here on the patio. It was a beautiful day. And I said, you see that house? I'm going in there and that's gonna be my cave. I'm not coming out. And so I did, that's what I did for quite a while. Janet continued in various ways to work through her grief. Encouraged by her sons, Janet kept a journal, which she then shared with others who had experienced a similar kind of loss. Through this, Janet's book, The Widow's Journey, was authored. I know it was part of my therapy. I didn't know it at the time. I cried through that entire book. Every time I wrote something, I'd find myself crying. But Crying is actually part of therapy, I found out. And I encourage people uh, in the book to write down some things. There are lots of things you can do in writing that, that help a lot. The book starts out, of course, talking about my own experience, and I met all these other people. I could not believe the stories I heard. They were so, they, they, they were so moving, you know, and so I found myself wanting to tell their stories too. A couple widowers read the book, and one of them wrote in the back that um, that this is as impertinent for men as it is for women, and it's true. And not only that, loss of any kind. What I try to tell widows and widowers is put yourself out there, listen, and look, and there's no end to what you can do.